to section 3.1, radian measure. A radian measure is the measure of an angle as a real number. An angle with its vertex at the center of a circle that intercepts an arc on the circle equal in length to the radius of the circle has a measure of one radian. So what that's saying is when we have um, an intercepted arc, so here's the arc, when that length is the same as the length of the radius of the circle, then that's considered to be a radian, one radian. So the measure of an angle in radians is equal to the length of the intercepted arc divided by the length of the radius. So theta, the angle in radians, is equal to S, which represents the length of the intercepted arc, divided by R, which is the radius. If no angle measure is specified, then the angle is understood to be measured in radians. Now we can convert between degrees and radian measures by using this proportion. Radians divided by pi is equal to degrees divided by 180. Okay, so let's convert each degree measure to radian measures. And it says to leave our answer in terms of pi, and I'll show you what that means in just a minute. So since we have the degree here, that's the degree, we're going to divide it by 180, and we're going to set that equal to r over pi. So since this is a, a proportion, the way that you solve pro uh, excuse me, the way that you solve proportions is by cross multiplying. Okay, so um, since we're trying to get r by itself, we're not going to cross multiply the r, but we are going to get rid of pi by halfway cross multiplying. We're going to cross multiply that one part. Okay, so then that gives us 45 pi over 180 equals r. Well, of course, that needs to be simplified. And if we were to simplify that, that would reduce to one-fourth. 45 over 180 would reduce to one-fourth, which would be the same thing as pi over 4. So pi over 4 is r. Okay, in B, we're going to do the same thing. This is my degree measure, and I'm going to divide it by 180. That equals R times pi, or divided by pi. And then again, we cross multiply that. So we get a negative 270 pi over 180. Okay, so this, um, let me back up just a little bit. This answer, since it said leave it in terms of pi, that just means we don't multiply out the pi. We just leave pi and um, don't plug it into our calculator as pi or 3.14 or anything like that. Just leave it the way that it's written with the pi um, number as pi. Okay, so this equals r. And if I reduce that, a negative 270 over 180 will reduce to 3 over 2. So this would give me a negative 3 pi over 2 is r. Okay, this 1800, if I divide that by 180 and multiply times pi, well, one eight, uh, eight, 1800 divided by 180 is 10. So that's just 10 pi equals r. So that's what our answers look like when we leave it in terms of pi. In the next couple of examples, it says to round to the nearest thousandth. So we're not going to leave it in terms of pi. We're going to multiply it out. So we start out the same way. This is divided by 180. And that equals r over pi. And then I'm going to cross multiply that. So when I get this 249.8 pi divided by 180, I'm going to put that in my calculator. And so if I divide that out, I get, and it says round to the nearest thousandth, I get that R is equal to 4.360. And so um, use the pi button on your calculator. Don't, don't round that to 3.14. Go ahead and, 
and use the pi button when you uh, multiply those two numbers and then divide by 180 and then round it to the nearest thousandth. Okay, for E, we have 122 degrees, 37 minutes. So you can do this one of two ways. You could um, go ahead and change this to decimal degrees by dividing this 37 minutes by 60. Or you could just put it straight into your calculator as 122 degrees and then the 37 minutes um, by using, by pressing the math button, scrolling over to numbers. This is in a TI-36X Pro. Scroll over to numbers and, um, no, it's not numbers. Scroll over, press the math button, and if you scroll over uh, to the right, the first tab says numbers, the second tab says degrees, minutes, seconds. And you could put it directly into your calculator like that. So either way, um, however you would prefer to, to calculate that. So this is divided by 180. And again, we're going to be cross multiplying. So we're going to multiply by pi, and that's going to give me r. So if I put that in my calculator and I round to the nearest thousandth, I get 2.140. Now we're going to go the other direction. We're going to convert from radians to degrees. So if we're going to convert from radians to degrees, this is my r. And I'm going to divide it by pi. And that equals um, the degree divided by 180. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, let me just show you what's going to happen one time real quick so you can understand um, why I'm going to do what I'm going to do. So, uh, just remember, if I have a fraction divided by a fraction, or divided by a number, I can't divide fractions by fractions. So, this pi is the same thing as pi over 1. Well, if I have a fraction divided by a fraction, I have to multiply by the reciprocal. So, that pi over 1 would... Um, the reciprocal of that would be 1 over pi. Okay, so now when I multiply this, this pi and this pi would cancel, and then I would just get 9 over 4. So that's what's going to happen to all of these when I divide by pi, the pi's are going to cancel. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I have 9 over 4 is equal to d over 180. And then I'm going to cross multiply this. So when I multiply 9 times 180, I get 1620 over 4 is equal to D. So when I divide that, I get 405, 405 degrees. All right, so then I'm going to do the same thing with the next example. So like I said, the pies cancel. Um, and I get a negative 5 times 180 over 6 equals D. And when I divide that out, I get a negative 150 degrees. All right, for our last example, pi over 2 divided by pi is equal to d over 180. My pi's cancel, so I'm left with 1 half is equal to d over 180. When I multiply by 180, 1 times 180, so I cross multiplied that, 180 divided by 2 is 90 degrees.